Hi guys and today we have got Shoaib from Kyrgyz State Medical Academy which is in Kyrgyzstan. Thanks for joining Shoaib. Hey guys, thank you for having me here. Okay, so there are many Indian students who look forward to pursue their MBBS in foreign universities. So today we have Shoaib who will give us a clarity over the foreign universities and especially his college. Okay, which is in Kyrgyzstan. So let's begin the conversation. The first question would be that why should a medical aspirant look forward to pursue MBBS abroad? Okay, uh, yes, as you know, Shivam, that there's a uh, serious shortage of doctors in India, like uh, the ratio of doctors is uh, something around 1 is to 1400, which is way below what is uh, the number prescribed by the WHO. So, you know the reason for it as well, there's a serious shortage of uh, medical government colleges in India. Uh, there are uh, in need, like there are over 15 lakh students that compete for the mere 50 to 60,000 uh, medical seats. And uh, coming to the private colleges in India, their fees are so high like it's nearly unaffordable for most of us. Also, uh, most of the private colleges in India don't even provide proper facilities in spite of charging a ridiculously high amount of fees. So what I'm trying to say is basically MBBS in abroad provides some kind of a solution for all this mismanagement. Like uh, there you can complete your whole course uh, in around 20 lakhs to 22 lakhs compared to what you would be uh, charged here in India uh, private college that is nothing less than 60 lakhs, 80 lakhs and uh, even crores. Also some medical colleges of China even provide scholarships to the students. Okay, so yeah, well most of the foreign medical graduates also tend to come back to uh, India after the completion of their course and uh, therefore these people also help to fill this gap of the demand and supply of the doctors here in India. Therefore, uh, all in all, Doing MBBS from abroad is a good decision if you are not able to crack the government seat here in India, of course. And uh, also studying MBBS uh, out of the country uh, provides you uh, international exposure and opportunity to practice in a foreign country. So yeah, all of this is uh, provided really you want to get into this profession and also provided that uh, you do your research very extensively and uh, select a good and authentic university. Okay, so now I would really like if you elaborate about this research thing, like how should a student like a class 12 student who wants to pursue MBBS abroad, how should he select his university and like what is the entire procedure? Okay, well, uh, this is the most important question, like how to select a university, whether to trust your agent who is recommending your university or whether to just follow a friend of yours who you know is pursuing MBBS from a particular college. So I to, I'll try to give you a very, very clear idea which will answer most of your doubts and also help you to shortlist uh, the best college for you. So there are a variety of factors that needs to be considered. Well, the first most important is to plan out your budget. The budget is highly variable in many different countries. Uh, like it varies from 40 to 50 lakhs in uh, places like Moscow and St. Petersburg in Russia and uh, 20 to 25 lakhs in countries like Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. So now before I go on, I would like you to know that everyone has a different criteria for selecting their colleges. It's not like uh, I'm in Kyrgyzstan or your friend is in some country, so you should follow me or follow them blindly. Okay, so moving on, the second step after sorting out your budget is uh, selecting a college. And uh, you should make sure that the college is MCI recognized. Now MCI is the Medical Council of India. It has been dissolved and uh, basically NMC, the National Medical Commission has taken over. Uh, but the list of the approved colleges that the MCI formulated is still the same. You don't uh, don't worry. You can Google it. It's uh, so it's really necessary. You select an MCI or rather an MC approved university if you want to come back to India and practice here as a doctor. Now, uh, after you have sorted out your budget and shortlisted the country accordingly, uh, there's a website I would like you to know is the wdoms.org. The it is a World Directory of Medical Schools. Now this is the place where all the medical colleges that are present globally are listed here. It has been developed by an uh, authentic organization of uh, Foundation of Advancement in International Medical Education Research that is FAIMER. So uh, what you need to do is that when you select a particular country according to your budget, go to this site and put the country name there in the search bar. Uh, you'll get the list of all the medical colleges in that country along with the basic details of all the college like uh, when it was started, the admission proce procedure, uh, the course duration, the language of the course, the affiliations and everything. 
so make sure to check the sponsor notes of the college the, that you select so how to check the sponsor note is that on the first page after you select a college uh, college on the upper right hand side you will find the sponsor note options go there uh, this place will have all the affiliations of that particular college okay so what you need to check there is whether the college is recognized by the ECFMG that is the education commission for foreign medical graduate uh, this body basically carries out the USMLE exam so it's important that the college is ECFMG recognized now you must be thinking that you don't want to appear for USMLE so why should I bother about that but uh, it's not like that whether you want to appear for USMLE or not it's important that the college itself should be recognized by ECFMG okay so next important part is uh, I should let you know that whether you go to abroad in Russia or China or anywhere you have to learn their language okay they are not English speaking countries so it's compulsory that you know their language in order to survive there and uh, be able to interact with the locals also you will be taught the language during your first few years in the college itself now why I'm telling you this is because you should know that in most of the college of Russia, Ukraine, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan uh, the medical college has different programs in different languages so these programs are basically three one is in English language second program is in Russian language throughout and uh, third is the bilingual programs for example my college uh, has two programs one is the English one in which the con uh, course throughout will be in English language and which is meant for foreign students and other program is carried out in Russian language in the same college for their local students you will find all these details in the WDOMS site that I said no need to worry but the best part is that there are some colleges that offers bilingual program that means the first couple of years when you have non-clinical subjects you will be taught in English language and of course Russian language will also be taught it's compulsory for a first couple of years whether the course is English or it's bilingual now what's bilingual exactly is that some college uh, what they do is that after teaching in English for first couple years from the third year when the clinical subjects are supposed to start they will switch to the Russian language okay now uh, you, it means that you have to study everything in Russian in case of Russia okay like even you have to take your exam in Russian so these are the bilingual courses so most students are not aware of this so it's important very it's uh, very important that you check these information extensively before you select a university there's no problem if you want to go for bilingual courses if you think you can manage you can go for it but i don't think majority of us would like to study the main subjects in a foreign language now that being said there are also a few points here and there that you should prefer like uh, choosing a university in the capital city of the country will be good uh, I personally prefer old university, older universities and there's also a thing called the MCI passing rate if you don't know after completion of your course from any MCI approved uh, abroad college like Russia, Ukraine or China you are required to clear an exam uh, year for foreign medical graduate like you were required to uh, clear this exam before you get the license to practice in India now it's replaced by the next exam so what I mean by MCI passing rate is that it's important to check the MCI rate but definitely it shouldn't be a sole criteria for selecting a college because of many reasons now I can't go into all that because this will be too long so what I mean is don't consider that as the only criteria to select or reject a college but it's important you should check that once okay that's all okay so that was an elaborate explanation thanks for that about how a student can select a college or select a university but now how does he go there like uh, what agency does he choose what consultant does it does he choose like how did you do it so there are many fraudsters in the business so like how to go about it please do explain okay this uh, answer can be summed up in a single line like uh, never trust anyone okay it's very important you you don't have to trust anyone even if the agent is your own uncle your old aunt your relative friend no you don't have to trust them at all listen to them definitely but always do your own research you have every information on your fingertips do your own research, note down all the important informations and then talk to your consultant. Uh, verify each and everything your consultant tells you. Also, I would suggest to not stick to one particular consultant. Talk to at least three to four different people. Uh, cross check all information they give you. Verify it from what you know and then only make your decisions. Because uh, I tell you why I approached four to five different consultants and one of them had a very high service fees like three or four times what any usual consultant should charge. So talking to different consultancy will give you a fair idea of the reasonable service fee. So be careful about that. 
Now, one of the very first agent I spoke to was suggesting me one college in Russia. He gave me all the details and advantages and I almost trusted him until I came back home and did my own research and I got to know the reality because that person was recommending a college which was bilingual. Okay. And he didn't even inform me about this. So what I would suggest here is stay away from those agents who promote and provide admission to only one particular university. Most of them are fraud, not all, most of them, because they have their benefits and profit from that particular university and they hardly care about the students and they even uh, hide most of the information and send the students. Not all, but most. You'll uh, come across many agents who will try to convince you to choose a particular university. Uh, they'll tell you to go to this college, uh, this country, this is the best one, this is the cheapest one and all. Uh, but don't let them select any university for you, you should uh, select your own university, okay? Uh, the job of the consultant is to be neutral and provide all the pros and also all the disadvantages and every possible information about each country. And also it's your job to be aware and do your research and be informed enough. Okay, so while editing, I'll put up a beware, I'll put up a beware sticker while editing. Anyways, uh, the next thing uh, which I would like to ask is that uh, I would like to add one thing that uh, most important point is that uh, keep in mind here like college fees you should not pay any college fees to any agent if any agent is demanding the college fees from you he is definitely a fraud because college fees is supposed to be paid to the college directly and not any agent so you know if an agent is asking you to pay the college fees to them and they will transfer to the college and so on don't do that okay kindly avoid them okay so some good points to be taken uh, note of so now that there is like how many months have you uh, been in this college now it's been like four months or so yes so my classes started from december so it's been around six months okay so like within these six months what do you realize how is the mbbs abroad different from the medical education system here in india Okay, there's some uh, notice, notable difference between India and abroad medical education. Uh, like the course duration in most of the countries is six years plus one year of internship. And uh, also that internship won't be valid here in India. Okay, and Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan, it's only five years. They don't provide internship. And uh, India, of course, you have four and a half year plus internship. So in the sixth year course, uh, the subjects are even more bifurcated and the syllabus is well structured. And uh, coming to the main important difference is that uh, their diseases are a lot different compared to India. Example in Russia and Ukraine, they are all are cold countries and India is a tropical country so they won't have uh, diseases like dengue and malaria. Okay, so next point I think the clinical exposure is the best in India compared to anywhere in the world. Like no other country will provide the clinical exposure as good as India. This is a fact. Now. In uh, medical colleges abroad, you have advantages like you have a lot of international exposure, you get a chance to interact with people from uh, different culture, communities and uh, so that's definitely a good point. And there are also some top ranked colleges in Russia and Ukraine uh, that have amazing infrastructures which you'll never find in India's private college. Okay. Also in most colleges the student to teacher ratio is very good like in my college also there are uh, 20 to 25 students per teacher so you per teachers so you have good opportunity for direct interaction with the teachers and regarding the education system in many different countries there's a lot of other things uh, like uh, which varies from country to country like uh, let me tell you in brief about Philippines if you wish to do your MBBS from Philippines uh, you are first put in a pre-medical program, like it's a bachelor program. You are not directly eligible to start MBBS in Philippines. Before you start your MBBS, you have to pass an exam uh, called as NMAT. Okay, And also Philippines MBBS syllabus is a lot different compared to other countries. And uh, example in Ukraine also you have an exam called as CROC that you are supposed to pass after your third year in order to continue your further studies. If you don't pass that test, uh, you won't be admitted to the next uh, examination session and uh, you can even be expelled from the university. So yeah, that's all I can recall right now. And talking about the similarities, uh, basically the subjects are pretty much the same, like India, in my college especially. Uh, like my college has all the common medical subjects, say ENT, Microbio, Psychology, Forensic, like almost everything. But uh, some countries also has some additional subjects according to their curriculum. So yeah, you should do the work of exploring all this before you choose to go abroad. 
Okay, so like, what are the countries which you shortlisted, and like, what's the reason for shortlisting them? Okay, before that, I would like you to know that firstly, I never thought about choosing Kyrgyzstan. Like, most of the people don't even know where is Kyrgyzstan. I was one of them. Anyway, interestingly, by the time I decided that yes, I'll go abroad, most of the admissions were closed by then. Okay, in most countries, especially uh, Russia and Ukraine. So only options I was left with was Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Belarus. So I started my research, of course, very late. And by the time I could decide anything uh, further, Kazakhstan admissions also got closed. So I was lef- left with Kyrgyzstan and Belarus. Anyway, I was quite uh, impressed by Kyrgyzstan because of many reasons. Firstly, as I said, that uh, criteria of budget, I found Kyrgyzstan to be very economical. Uh, secondly, the course duration, as I said, that it's five years as compared to six years plus one year of internship in most uh, other countries. And the internship won't even be valid in India. Means you have to do your internship again in India, which makes it a total of eight years. Okay, and in Kyrgyzstan they don't provide internship. It uh, has both its advantages and disadvantages. But for me personally, I found it to be uh, an advantage because I'll be saving my one year time. So most internships uh, from abroad is not valid in India as of now. Secondly, the syllabus of Kyrgyzstan was more uh, more close to India's MBBS curriculum. And uh, thirdly, Kyrgyzstan has a very good connectivity with India. It has, or it rather had a direct flight from Delhi to the capital, Bishkek, because of which travel time was like only around three hours. So you know now the flights are cancelled, and no one knows whether the direct flight will restart any time soon. So it hardly matters anymore. And uh, regarding Belarus, it would overshoot my budget, so I dropped that. Now, also, I would like to tell you very, very honestly that if you ever decide to go abroad. Uh, you need to be self-dependent for your studies, okay? Because teachers here in my college, what I've seen is that they will rarely teach you, and only very, very few teachers are genuinely good. The rest don't even care. I'm sorry to say that, but yeah, that's the reality, and not only in Kyrgyzstan, but most of the other countries as well. So yes, considering that there's a lot of investment that you are putting here financially, so you decide to go abroad only if you really want to get in the profession. And you are sure that you can manage yourself with the studies, and uh, you can justify the investment. And uh, since there will be no one to tell you to study, you are just there on your own. Uh, what's your purpose? Uh, you should know that what's your purpose and everything. Rest on the brighter side. If you are really passionate about it, uh, you can manage yourself. Uh, then it will be a cakewalk for you, and nothing can stop you from being a good doctor. That's what I can say. Okay, so that was a really very good conversation indeed because, like this entire conversation, it was it had so much of information for all the students who are looking forward for a career in MBBS in foreign universities. So there were too many points they should have noted throughout uh, the conversation. I guess they must have till now, and I'm looking forward for more such collaborations with you, more such con- conversations with you, Shoaib, in the future. So thanks for being there. Thanks for the conversation, man. Thank you, Shivam, for having me here. It was amazing to talk about my experiences, what I've learned, and uh, I'm glad that you called me here. Thank you so much. Okay, so that's it for now, guys. Thank you.